Hi everybody, this is Dan Talk Sense, and today I'll be giving you my thoughts on the Dior Fahrenheit line. I've been excited about doing this video because Fahrenheit is one of my favourite fragrances of all time and is a big part of my fragrance journey. So in today's review, I'm going to give you my thoughts on the original from 1988, Fahrenheit Absolute from 2009, Fahrenheit Aqua from 2011, and Fahrenheit Le Parfum from 2014. In the review today, I'll tell you about the performance projection of each fragrance, the type of season and occasion you'd wear each one in, and I'll give my overall thoughts on whether I think you should go down and look for these some of these discontinued gems that I've got with me today. So if that kind of thing would interest you, then please stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. So my fragrance journey started back in around the year 2000. I was 13 years old and my mum and dad, like with many people, would buy you things like Old Spice and Brute. Um, and then when my, I started to get to the world of employment, I worked in a shop called Matalan, which is a clothing shop. Um, and next door we had a cosmetic shop, like a pharmacy shop, and they had fragrances in there. And at the time in the year 2000, the early 2000s, the fragrances that were really popular at the time were Le Mal, Chanel Sport, and um, Dior Fahrenheit. And I remember when I used to wear Dior Fahrenheit, the mixture of comments that I used to get, it was like the Marmite of men's fragrances. So younger people would say, you know, don't wear that again, you smell terrible, you smell like an old man. But more mature ladies would say, that's really good, it's really musky, and it's a real man's fragrance, you know, and they'll be really complimentary when I wore Fahrenheit. Like many people, when I smell modern versions of Fahrenheit, I'm quite disappointed with the performance projection, and um, it just doesn't seem to have that same DNA. It was really brave um, of the brand to bring out Fahrenheit at the time with this strong, um, unique petroleum note in there. Um, I was doing a bit of research today about why the Dior Fahrenheit hasn't got the petroleum note anymore and what gave it um, that petroleum note in there, what, you know, how it was created. And on one of the forums, I think it was on Fragantica, somebody said that it was the violet leaf that they use and there was a certain chemical in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the screen and show you what they said. Basically, the chemical that they used in the fragrance has now been banned by IFRA, which is quite a common thing now we see about fragrances being reformulated because certain notes... Um, and chemicals can't be used in the fragrance. But that is what gave it that strong gasoline note um, back in the day. Now, for me, I love the smell of petrol and it gives me good memories of going away to the beach. We got a shell garage in Donington. It was knocked down now, but it used to be a shell garage. And it always reminded me of when we'd be sitting in the back of the car, my dad would be filling up with petrol, ready to take us to the beach. Um, and just good, really positive memories of the gasoline. I really like that smell. Um, and you have to say, this is still a fantastic fragrance. And I've not seen a fragrance brand that has managed to capture the magic of the original batches of Dior Fahrenheit. Um, you know, we get clone houses that can clone all types of fragrances, but I've not yet seen a company that's managed to clone this one. So you had the mixture of violet leaf, leather, you had some floral notes in this one as well. And I always remember it sort of had this nice, calm, um, cucumber type note which was quite refreshed and I always smelled sort of like a cucumber in there um, and I, when I used to put it on I used to drench my t-shirt in it and it was just a real nice combination of leather, violet leaf, floral notes, a little bit of orange in there and there's carnation and different things there's even a bit of tonka in there but what an absolutely fantastic fragrance release from Dior um, all the way back in 1988. There's um, a forum that you can look at called La Raiders of the Lost Ark, and it'll tell you about the different batch codes. But from memory, there was there's been three big formulations or reformulations. The first one, the strongest potency of Fahrenheit, was from 1988 to about 1998. Um, then it was from 1998 to about 2006. 
and then after 2006 it's in its third formulation now, that's from my memory that's sort of the dates that i was looking at the one i've got with me today is from 2001 you can always look out for a vintage batch of fahrenheit boy it's got christian dior paris at the bottom if you see in there what I am going to do at the end of the video is do a, do a look at the presentation. A lot of reviewers tend to do that at the start of the presentation. But if you hold on till the end, I'll end this video by showing you the presentation um, of, the, of the fragrances. I think that's really important. So that's the first one, the original from 1988. Now the next one in the line, um, and this is really sought after and worth a lot of money. If you go on things like eBay, um, these will cost you £100 plus now, Dior Fahrenheit Absolute. Now I'd watched a number of reviews and I, I, I may do a review on this one on its own. I've done one on the Aqua Fahrenheit, um, but I was given the impression from watching reviews that this was going to be a really dark, uh, mysterious, smoky fragrance. And it is, it is in a way... Um, but I would class this as the same as a wood lamb wheat de Lome or Dolce Gabbana the one because this is fresh and spicy. Now just to remind myself if I look on the notes, you've got in this one, I thought they'd be written on the bottle but they're not. Um, but you've got myrrh, you've got incense, you've got amber accord in there um, and you've you sort of, it's taken in a total different direction to the original Fahrenheit in my opinion. It's not like an in your face oud in there, like an argo wood. It's not like a, um, a barnyard smell. It's like a light smokiness. So if you could smell a campfire from a bit of a distance away and you've got the fresh incense in there as well. And then you've got this nice myrrh in there as well. So it's like, it's like I would class it as a slightly smoky, sweet, spicy fragrance, fr refreshing um, and um, and it was totally different to what I expected. Um, a lot of people say that this is a fragrance that you'd wear at a funeral. And I, I could see where they're coming from because of the dark presentation and the smokiness to it. I was speaking to a lady in the perfume shop in Telford Town Centre. And she said that this was her husband's signature scent. Um, because it reminded her of Christmas because it's got the myrrh and the incense in there. And she would classify this as like Christmas in a bottle. And she goes, it smelled absolutely amazing on her husband. She was really gutted when it ran out because um, it's hard to find now. And I do want to go back in to speak to the lady and tell her, show her this. And so, you know, to talk to her about this fragrance. She was really enthusiastic talking about this fragrance. And I told her I was a fragrance enthusiast as well. And it's always nice when you speak to somebody and they, they've shared that passion. Um, with fragrances and, and, and if they've got a story attached to a fragrance. So she said that if she found one, um, you know, for sale, she'd definitely snap it up straight away because of how good it smells. I would definitely say that this is the best smell in one of the Fahrenheit line. It is very hard to describe, you know, um, when I've, I've watched numerous reviews on this and, I've, and I don't think a reviewer has, has managed to nail it with how to really get across how, how nice it smells. Um, it's just fresh, spicy, but really delicate fragrance. And if you want a fragrance that everybody's gonna smell on you, this isn't the one, but if people in your, in your close proximity, they will smell this on you and they'll really um, be, I think they'll be pleasantly surprised by it and will ask you what you're wearing because it's very unique and a very, very nice fragrance, beautiful presentation and um, a really good release. And I don't know why they discontinued it because what a phenomenal scent. Um, I would say definitely the best smelling one of the line. Fresh, sweet, spice, slightly spicy, slightly smoky and absolutely phenomenal scent by um, Dior Fahrenheit. So that's the second one. The third one that um, was released in the line was was Aqua Fahrenheit. There was Fahrenheit Clone and Fahrenheit Summer, um, but for me, I've, I've, I've experienced those and I think they're really weak. So I'm not showing the entirety of the line. I've just picked out four of the line today, which I think um, are, are the best. I do want to get Fahrenheit 32. Um, that's, you know, one fragrance I definitely want to purchase, but I've not found it a reasonable price yet. But what I do, I will be purchasing that. And I think that'll be 
um, my collection complete from Dior Fahrenheit line. I've, I've smelt cologne and I've smelt summer and for me they don't last um, very long at all uh, um, and not really, not really good in my opinion. For a summer version of Fahrenheit, Aqua Fahrenheit is absolutely fantastic. So what they've used is the note of grapefruit and it's like bitter and juicy and it works really well with the Aqua, with the Dior Fahrenheit DNA. So you've got the original parts of the DNA, but they take away that petroleum um, gasoline vibe and you've got still got the leather in there, um, but you've got the orange and you've got grapefruit at the top. And this is a really good performing summer fragrance. Although I want to make a really um, important point. I wore this in the high heat of the summer. So it was about 28 degrees in the UK. And I remember at the time I, I couldn't smell it on my skin and my skin sort of drank it up and evaporated it straight away. And um, I was thinking this isn't good at all. This is weak and I was tempted to sell it. But I wore this in the spring season and um, it really shone. This lasted all day. It really projected well on my skin and I had a, quite a lot of compliments when I wore this one. People said that they could smell leather on me, but also a fresh citrus, citrusy smell. Um, so the the description of this was fire meets water and they, they've got it spot on because they've got that original DNA, but they've, they've got the right citrus in there that refreshes it. Um, but it doesn't clash. I think it'd be really difficult to get the right citrus notes to work with a finite DNA to make it a nice scent character, but they've done really well with this one. Superb performance. And um, if I just, yeah, it's just, it's hard to explain, but yeah, the original Fahrenheit DNA, but with the refreshing bitter grapefruit note on top, really good fragrance and beautiful presentation as well. Now I just want to finish up, um, this was 2014. Now, there are some people that have said on some of the forums that Fahrenheit Parfum was um, a substitute for Fahrenheit Absolute. Um, I don't know why, because there are totally different um, fragrance um, breakdown in terms of DNA um, and scent character. The Fahrenheit Absolute took it in a total different direction. It was a sweet and spicy fragrance. And if it was in a different bottle, you wouldn't associate it with Dior Fahrenheit. This one, Fahrenheit Parfum, is much closer to the original, um, but what they've done is they've replaced the gasoline note with a bourbon vanilla note, and it is absolutely beautiful. What it smells like is if you smell into a barrel of, um, of bourbon whiskey, um, you could smell it and it was getting made, and, uh, and you went on one of those whiskey tasting days. Um, that's what it smells like and it reminds me of Christmas and going to Christmas markets and there's a place in Telford where I live called Albert Shed where um, it's all wood on the inside and it's built like a shed in the interior and they have live music there um, and around Christmas I go there quite a lot and um, drink a lot of real ale and I will put a lot of this on and I've always had compliments and people ask me what I'm wearing and people have said that um, they can smell me from quite a distance away. This is a really good performer. And there's been murmurs that this will become discontinued soon. They're getting harder to find. I seem to find them around quite a lot. Um, but once this runs out, I'll definitely be buying another bottle. I've got through that in quite a bit. It's about 40 mils left. It started, you know, I had 75 to begin with. So I've used it quite a bit. And it's just... Everything that you're looking for in terms of a modern twist on the original Fahrenheit is in this bottle. It's got fantastic performance of projection, um, but they've added something unique to it with that bourbon vanilla note, and it's it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and I just really enjoy wearing it, and it just reminds me as well of walking home and I can see my breath in the air because it's that cold. Um, just a really fantastic fragrance. Now. If I wanted to classify them into different occasions, I would say that the original Fahrenheit, um, if you bought a, a vintage version, 
um, then wear this for special occasions when you really want to enjoy it and you want to experience it. Um, so some people wear fragrances for special occasions because it adds to the occasion, makes it more memorable. So some people wear them for weddings or funerals or um, job interviews or you know parties whatever it is positive or negative experience they'll wear a fragrance that reminds them of that um, that experience and I think wearing a vintage bottle of Fahrenheit you'd use it sparingly and really enjoy it and it will remind you of older times maybe spent with relatives um, so I would say this is a special occasion fragrance to wear not all the time but um, special days and it could be worn in most weathers, but it really shines um, in the autumn time for me. Um, when it's Not when it's quite bitterly cold, but it's on the way to get into winter. I would think this is for the autumn, um, the, the original Dior Fahrenheit. And I'll just show you a close-up to the camera. I will show you a close-up presentation of all fragrances shortly. Now, if we're still going in chronological order, Fahrenheit Absolute for me... Some people would wear it at Christmas because it's got the notes that remind them of Christmas with the myrrh and the incense. Um, for me, I would wear this on a date night because it's an intimate fragrance. It's a close encounter fragrance. I'll put it in the same ballpark as Lamweet de Lome and um, Dolce Gabbana the One where it's really close to the body but smells phenomenal and it's something that we've always wanted with Dolce Gabbana the One and um, Lamweet de Lome to project more but maybe some fragrances are designed to be closer to the skin and um, so it makes you want to go in more to smell it and whenever I've worn those type of fragrances when I've had when I've been on dates then the women that I've been on dates with have always said um, can I um, you know what have you what are you wearing that smells really good and it's it's you know it's one of those and i think this will be in the same ballpark as those it smells so so good um absolutely the best smell in one of the lines so this would be a date scent and probably i'd wear this in the uh, in the spring maybe okay aqua fahrenheit for me although um it was designed as a summer fragrance in the real high heat it doesn't perform well on my skin so this would be a work scent, but um, this would also be in the springtime. Um, and yeah, because it just doesn't shine as well in a real high heat. And you're talking like 28 degrees. Sometimes we get in the UK on rare occasions, my skin really dries it up. But I would say this would be one for the office because it's sort of a lighter version of Dior Fahrenheit. If you wore Dior Fahrenheit, people might think it smelled a bit outdated, but this is fresher with a grapefruit at the top and it worked really well. Um, so I'd definitely be wearing this when it starts getting closer to the summer months, but not when it's real peak summer. I'd say probably springtime I'd wear this for work. So this would be my work scent. And the last one, Fahrenheit Le Parfum for me is an outstanding fragrance, one of the best winter designer fragrances of all time i would wear this as a winter scent without doubt always look forward to winter because i can get fragrances like mansara red tobacco carlisle and this one is always on my list with spice bomb extreme i will wear this a lot through december and january superb scent so this would be my winter scent and, and nights out scent as well in the winter in the summer i wear fresher good performing scents in the winter, I wear these dark, smoky, tobacco-based fragrances that perform really well. So this would be my night out, grab attention type fragrance in the winter. So they're my thoughts on the floor from the line. I really want to get my hands on Fahrenheit 32. Um, I've not managed to get my hands on it yet. I'd like to know your thoughts on Fahrenheit 32 and whether you think I should add that to my collection of the four Fahrenheit fragrances. I'll now go to a close-up before we finish, but before I do a close-up, I just want to say thank you all for watching my video today. I welcome your feedback. Let me know what you think about the Fahrenheit line, and um, I appreciate you spending the time to watch my review today. I'll speak to you all very soon. So guys, we look at the presentation and I've got to say, this is without doubt one of my most favourite parts of the review. I just think the bottles of Fahrenheit are absolutely beautiful, beautiful presentation. One thing I just want to point out on the Fahrenheit bottle, this is a semi-vintage batch. I believe it was from 2002 when I did the batch checker. 
you can see Christian Dior Paris written on there rather than Dior. And that's a quick thing to look out for if you're looking for a vintage um, batch of Fahrenheit. You look at the Absolu and it's a darker bottle that gives it that darker mysterious look. Really like that. I think it's really nice and classy. The Aqua Fahrenheit presentation was where water meets fire. That's why it's more lighter in colour and you've got the black nearer to the top. And then you've got Fahrenheit Parfum, the more modern version of Fahrenheit. But all in all, I, I'd give it a 10 out of 10 for a presentation for all the bottles of Fahrenheit. Very beautiful in my opinion.